Hi everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to dive into the 2019 questions for nine days by Tony Jordan. We're really excited about this text. We've just filmed our uh, deep dive video into it. So if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you take a look at it. I think you'll really get a lot out of it. But today's video is uh, short, sharp and sweet. Uh, we're here to take a look at the two questions that were posed to students who studied this text in 2019. And I'm not going to go through and plan an essay for you. I think that you're going to be able to be uh, doing that on your own. But I am going to talk to you about ways that you could approach it and some pitfalls that you might uh, fall into that we want to make sure that you steer clear of and some things that could really get you going to make sure that you plan some excellent responses. As always, I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts and your questions down there in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now. It means that uh, we can keep making these videos and keep helping you out with your VCE journey. But let's take a look at these questions. The first one, as you can see on your screen now, in Jordan's novel, seemingly insignificant decisions have major consequences. Do you agree? And so it's worth mentioning at this point that we've also created a video that looks at six different types of questions that may be put to you in the VCE English exam. And you can find that on our channel and I'll include a link to it in the description as well. And that'll take you through how to look at things like do you agree and so on. And so I don't have to do that in too much depth here. But one thing when I was reading responses to this question in 2019 that I saw an awful lot were the students that took one look at, it, look at it and then thought, okay, I just have to think of a whole bunch of seemingly insignificant decisions that have major consequences. And I can tell you right now that in a really general way, if you went about it in writing, all right, paragraph one, this was uh, an inconsequential, uh, sorry, an insignificant decision that uh, had major consequences. Paragraph two, uh, this was another insignificant decision. And paragraph three, here's another one. It's a really plain and banal way of going about answering this question, and it's not going to lead to those very top responses. Of course, you might be sitting there thinking, well, that's what the question asked. Shouldn't that be the type of evidence that we come up with? And of course, it should be. The ability to discuss those types of insignificant decisions and the ability to brainstorm them should be the bedrock of what your essay is all about. But it shouldn't be all that it is about. And so as you're taking a look at that, start to think about what Jordan is saying about these insignificant decisions. And rather than just mentioning what those decisions might have been and proving that you know the text, show that you can think deeper about it and start to think about the messages, the values, the big ideas that Jordan might have been getting to by the manner in which she described those insignificant decisions and the major consequences that come from them. And so a few of them that we can think of off the top of our head would, of course, be Alec at the end of uh, the text. We think about uh, the two pregnancies that happen and the way in which they come about, um, particularly with Connie and that manner in which uh, she is uh, not able to have that social life that she does and then the manner in which Jack is taken away to war. So really, what does that say? Is that a case of Jordan sitting there saying, oh, well, bad luck for Connie? Or is that more talking about these major consequences that came about, not because just of the event that led to Connie's pregnancy, but rather the fact that uh, Jack was taken to war when we knew that he really didn't want to go and the, what that meant in terms of societal expectation and so on. And so the point that I'm trying to make is that there was a huge difference in 2019 between the students who went, right, here's one, two and three insignificant decisions that uh, you know had major consequences and let me just prove to you uh, how well I know the text, as opposed to the students that looked at what those insignificant decisions were, what the consequences were, and therefore what Jordan was saying to the reader through the text, through those events, and what was uh, able to be conveyed and how we could understand the text and her ideas better through those sort of decisions. Of course, in addition to that, students that could round out their discussion with the symbols and the structural elements and the decisions made by Jordan in order to convey those ideas went even further with their analysis and were really getting to the top of the tree. With the second question, how does nine days explore the relationship between the past and the present? 
And the huge difference when it came to these two was the difference between the students who rushed past that very first word. The question is asking, how does nine days explore the relationship? And so if you have been asked how a novel does something, you are being asked to show your understanding of how it's been constructed. You are not there to just say, okay, I can talk about the relationship between the past and the present. You are being asked to show your understanding of how. And so the key discriminator between how well students did with uh, their responses to this essay question was between those who really considered uh, the construction of the text and the decisions that Jordan had made in order to get these ideas across and those that had just thought, okay, I'm just going to list about all the things that are said about the past and the present. Of course, like the first question, once that was considered and making sure that students were uh, analysing from a point of talking about the uh, construction of text and the structural elements, the literary elements, all those types of things that have been included, students that could take themselves even further were, of course, again, those who could talk about what uh, Jordan was saying about the passing of time and the ideas that she can get across. And so a few things that you could use uh, when I'm talking about those structural elements or symbols, things like the pendant, the shilling, uh, the lily pilly tree that exists in the garden on Rowena Parade, uh, the discussion of the house itself as a physical uh, space, you know, being halfway up the hill in all these different decades and how that changes and what that means. Uh, things like pregnancies that happen in two very different decades and what that means. Anything where there was a case of events or symbols or things that existed in more than one of the stories, in more than one era, and what Jordan was able to say through those symbols and through those things that had happened. That's what the question's asking. It's asking you to show an appreciation and an understanding of how Jordan is able to show the shifting of time and then once you've got there to be able to talk about what she is saying through that shifting of time and what ideas she's looking to convey. Again, just make sure with both of these questions, as with any Section A video that we have uh, put forward to you all, if you have a really great knowledge of what the author is trying to convey and how they've looked to convey it through their text, then you're setting yourself up for success you are limiting yourself if you are only scanning through the question, looking at the key ideas and just coming up with evidence that proves it to be true. So take a look at those. Let me know how you go with your planning. Ask any questions uh, down there in the comments and uh, all the best with your studying. We're here to help you if you need anything else. So put it down there in the comments and we'll get to it. Otherwise, we'll see you next time and all the best and good luck with your studying of nine days.